In the heat of the noise of Grand Prix racing, youth sailing often gets overlooked. But let's face facts, they are the future. So I, for one, was looking forward to the 2021 Youth Sailing World Championships in Oman. And if you're in any doubt as to the importance of an event that has now been running for 50 years, just look at the names that have won the youth world since it began in 1971. Russell Coates, Chris Dixon, Dean Barker, Nathan Outridge, Ian Jensen, Robert Scheid, Ben Ainsley, Ian Percy. And so the list goes on. You get the point. What happens today could shape what we talk about tomorrow. Aside from the names of the rising stars, the other thing to strike me was to hear and see how much foiling is a part of the youth world. There are plenty of people with hair the same colour as mine who question whether foiling is really sailing and whether it'll really catch on. In my opinion, they're wrong. But who cares what I think? According to the new generation, it's not a topic that's up for debate and good for them. And if you still think that these kids don't know what they're missing by not having a lead keel and a good old fashioned head bang up wind, take a listen to British sailing team coach Sam Ross. It's fascinating and makes you realise just how far down the line these kids are. I urge you to watch the full interview by either following the links in the description below or on screen. In the meantime, Ellie Cartwright provides a roundup from Oman. This is the 2021 Youth Sailing World Championship right here in the Gulf of Oman. There were two ways to get to the podium, smash every race and cruise to a medal, or fight for every point. Those that dominated their classes often did so with style. Israel's Gal Zuckerman won every single race in the Formula Kite females. Few in the world ever get to know what it's like to discard a string of firsts as their worst score in a series. Zuckerman now does. As does Manon Pianaza from France in the girls' Techno 293 fleet. She too won every race. Interestingly, in the kites, Poland's Julia Damandesiec discarded any result that wasn't a second to take the runner-up medal. Heloise Pegori from France posted mainly thirds to come third overall. In the male techno class, it was a similar affair as Italy's Federico Poloni notched up 10 wins from 13 races. Very, very excited today because I've managed to officially win it a day before, so that's, you know, brilliant and uh, I've dreamed to get this title and it's just been a really nice journey to come here and I'm just so so happy. Britain's Boris Shaw took eight seconds and a win to finish second overall. Confidence was in abundance in the Formula Kite male class as Maximilian Maeder from Singapore delivered 14 wins out of 18 races to take gold. I feel Great, I mean, it can't go much better, can it? <laughs> uh, the first day was a bit of a blunder, but you know, this day completely equalizes it. I'm, I'm phenomenally happy. In the 420 females, there was a close battle between the Spanish and the Americans for the top spot, with Neos Ballester and Andrea Pereo taking the title for Spain. Well, I don't know, it's so happy for us to make these positions. And it was so regular because we do a 3-1, 3-1, 3-1, and today a 4-1. <laughs> But well, we are very, very happy. happy. In the 420 mixed cruise, Germany's Florian Krauss and Yanis Sumchen might never have won a race, but they were always close to the front, which was sufficient to win overall by just four points. In the girls Ilka 6 class, Florencia Ciarella's best results were two thirds, but the Peruvian sailor and a product of the Emerging Nations program still took the overall win by nine points. France's Hugo Reville and Carl Devaux pulled a similar trick in the male 29er class, with only one win but a string of consistently good results elsewhere. In the same class with the girls, British pair Emily Moella and Florence Brellisford spent the week sparring with Charlie Lee and Sophie Fisher from the USA. 
Yeah, so the racing's been really close between us and the US. Um, even, we've been sort of like top three most races with them and us. But then there's been a couple of races where we've had a bad one, but they've also had a bad one in the same race. So we've always been really close. Um, so it's just been about fighting for every position. We've crossed the line pretty much at the same time as them in quite a few races. So it could have sort of gone either way. But um, luckily we've, we've pipped them at the last, <laughs> last moment. So yeah, really a really exciting event. American hopes were up in the NACRA 15, where Kay Brunsvold and Cooper Delbridge were locking horns with Thomas Proust and Eloise Clabon from France. After 13 races, it was the French team that took victory by five points. But the hardest way to win gold by far was in the Ilka 6 male class. After nine closely fought battles, Bermuda's Sebastian Kemp was victorious by just one point over both second and third. Slovenia's Luka Zabakovec and Jose Mendes from Portugal finished on 40 points apiece, with the Slovenian taking second on the tiebreak. Amazing! <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I've been working so hard for the last two years for this moment. It, it feels really, really good. <laughs> it was so tough. It was, it was hard for me to concentrate. It was uh, extremely, extremely stressful trying to do the maths in your head and then also trying to see which boats you have to beat. It was, with the conditions as well, it was extremely difficult. Finally, there was the nation's trophy for the best team performance, won by France. December in Oman had delivered a superb event, a fitting celebration for the 50th anniversary. But what also struck me was that while close racing and medal winning performances were impressive, so too was the number of different nationalities that were at the front of the fleet. If this event is a barometer for the state of the sport, then the future for international racing looks very bright indeed.